Okay. Shadrach Kuskei could not make it to the show for that discussion on the newspaper review section. But Biashara Tuesday is plenty and we never lack. We are joined here by a very interesting guest, a special guest on Biashara Tuesday for the first time from the KUTV newsroom. She'll be helping us delve much more into the happenings of the day here on the dailies. We're taking a look at the business daily, the daily nation, and as well as the standard. The headlines are of importance to us, but also we can't fail to cover some stories from last week, the ones that are informing the direction of politics, but also informing the direction of business. Top of the business daily, shilling hits 150 against the US dollar. The official central bank rate now currently stands at uh, 142.98. However, in other places where you will be exchanging for the dollar, you're getting it at 150. Who are the major casualties? Debt repayment, because we pay it in dollars. Imports, because we import in dollars. So business is going to be tough. As taxes go up, as the shilling goes down, as debt goes up, the economic times are getting tougher. As uh, here, the new rate, it has I&M, 152, actually more than 150. The government is saying by next year, June, it will be 151, but I&M is doing it at 152. So I'm guessing that is the CBK lending rate, which they are projecting to be at 151, since currently it's 142. So if by next year, the CBK lending rate will be at 151, which is 10 from now, it means the shilling will be trading against the dollar at what I predicted earlier to be maybe 160 shillings to one dollar. Tough times ahead. Petroleum prices are also going up. The Finance Act has been in court for two days, for two months, sorry. For two months now, the Finance Act has been in court. The Court of Appeal did lift that suspension and allow the government to implement the collection of levies and taxes. But you remember last month when we were on this show, we kept debating around the petroleum levy. How is it moved from 8 to 16 percent? The High Court uh, put uh, freezing orders on the Finance Act. However, EPRA wakasema sisi ya tutambui yo mambo. Mutendelea kulipa taxes at 16%. We're getting reactions as well from Masi Wanjiru on that and more stories that are happening here on uh, the standard, the top of the headline. Ruto maintains tough conditions ahead of talks. President William Ruto yesterday said he is ready for dialogues with the opposition, but he won't be blackmailed using violence and the power sharing. And that power sharing is uh, one of the table, is off, is off the table as his henchmen also ruled out talks on the cost of living. Hopes and fears of school leavers, you can see there on the right corner of the standard, close to 600,000 students who sat for KCSC last year did not opt for placement to universities or colleges. For some, the cost was prohibitive, but for others, it was out of ignorance. But ignorance for more than half a million students, and it's just a month before the first semester kicks in across universities in the country. What will be the fate of these students, including the new university model that is diverting away from what was previously, and we'll be discussing exactly how that looks like. To wrap it up, we'll have a look at also the Daily Nation and top of the headlines is a forced NYS style drill for students. There's going to be mandatory three month community service after senior school, as well as nine months upon completion of university and college. This will be required mandatory of graduates before securing employment if education reforms by this presidential tax force are implemented. Yani, okimalza high school, lazimo pigezako safi pale tatu, NYS community service, Mandatory, see it you help unless you get getting out of the country. And if you're in university or college, ukisha toka uko nje, pigia nine months, safi pale NYS, alafu utafute kazi. So that's going to be on page seven of the Daily Nation. But let me welcome our guest here uh, this morning to the show for the first time. Very bright smile as we do here on Biashara Tuesday. So you're already in brand. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing well. All right. I'm having a wonderful morning. Please do justice to your introduction. I'm sure I've not done anything important in introducing <laughs> you. Tell our viewers who you are and uh, you know a brief uh, outlook on the activities that you do here at KUTV and then we can get into the discussion. Well, my name is Masi Wanjiro. I'm a political reporter here at KUTV. 
Yes, that referred scripts on news reporting. Yes. All right. Politics are uh, of importance to business, so mm -hmm. we're glad that you were able to join us here. Yeah, thank you. Let me just from your angle, what headline in a kufrai shapa? Nigani unona? Leo, kwa sababu na work newsroom, you know, you're very well, well versed with editors. Nigani editor hapa unasema nyea alifanya kazi mzuri? Well, let's start with the political, because okay. I'm a political analyst. Okay. You see here the Ruto Rela rule out power sharing ahead of the crucial talks. Yes. And let me start from my expectations here. Mm -hmm. I think in the mind of the president is that the opposition should come, mm -hmm. but there's no sharing of the government. Okay. He feels that history will repeat itself. As you mm -hmm. can see, in the last government, mm -hmm. there was a handshake, and after the handshake, things went even worse. Mm -hmm. Now he doesn't want like things to repeat itself, and you know what he went through at that time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time here, we check Raila, it's like, he's going on that sector. Mm -hmm. I think calling out for demonstrations mm -hmm. for the high cost of living mm -hmm. is not a right way of telling the government to do something and they have they have members leaders in the parliament mm -hmm. they should give the ideas to leaders in the parliament mm -hmm. to go and for for to go and give what the opinions on what should be done on the high cost of living right. you see if they i tend to say that if this government is truly doing not doing in the right way mm -hmm. then the opposition leader that are there demonstrating mm -hmm. they should say they should not receive salaries okay they should not receive salaries and instead say this government is not working mm -hmm. let us i won't accept because they are in the same if they receive salary they are in the same government, government right. yeah. that's true that's very true so if they are really caring about us kenyans and the high cost of living they should say we are no longer receiving salaries mm -hmm. for the Someone else also said that um, if the opposition is decrying uh, corruption and you know uh, mismanagement of funds, mm -hmm. there are counties that have governors mm -hmm. from the opposition side. Mm -hmm. They should also take a look at their own backyard. Yeah. You know, why do we have high cases of corruption in Siaya? Why mm -hmm. do we have high cases of corruption in Migori? Mm -hmm. And these are counties which are headed by people who are in the opposition yeah. calling out the government. So mm -hmm. there's that kind of double speak, and it's important that you mm -hmm. have uh, pointed it out there. Mm -hmm. But here we see also that uh, there's a ten aside team which is being set for bipartisan talks between, mm -hmm. of course, the Kenya Kwanza side and uh, Azimiola Moja. The first round of talks mm -hmm. happened between. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, President Ruto, uh, former Prime yes. Minister Raila Odinga, where the ex-president of Nigeria, Obasanjo, was present in the coastal uh, mm -hmm. region. Going forward, do you think that this 10-man team will be sticking to the needs of Monainchi, to mm -hmm. the high cost of living, to the issues which are being raised that are pertinent to Kenyan? Taxes are going up, and we're expecting these 10 people who are in parliament, as you've said, they're already in government. Mm -hmm. They might be in the opposition, but mm -hmm. they're receiving salaries as government. Is there a chance they, they are thinking about us? Is there really a chance they're thinking about us? You know, there's one thing I noticed when they, they called out for this, and the first thing they were calling out is about the IBC server. Mm -hmm. And I was asking myself, the first thing that should be here is the high cost of living. Mm -hmm. The high cost of living is what is bothering the common monarchy. Mm -hmm. If they're bringing the aspect of the Finance Act, that should be the first thing. Mm -hmm. But let's wait to see how these talks are going to be, mm -hmm. because I'm not really sure. You see, there was a change of the leaders who are in there. Mm -hmm. I hope there won't be wrangles. I hope there will be understanding within them. Mm -hmm. but let's, hope, let's see. Let, let, let's, let's wait and see. All right, here President William Ruto is quoted saying, I had our brothers in the opposition agree with us that they, that they just like us, are oppressed, are opposed to the handshake. Now that they have declared so, they should go ahead and agree on ending violence. And through that, we shall agree. And through that, we shall agree on everything else. I had our brothers in the opposition are in oppo are opposing the handshake. Any? There's something funny happening here uh, in these discussions. Yeah. So President William Ruto. He's saying he does not want a handshake, Check. yeah? Mm -hmm. There's no handshake government. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister Raila Odinga and his mm -hmm. team is also saying, I'll track handshake. handshake. Who's, who's asking for the handshake then? <laughs> Who, who's, who's ask, why are we discussing about something no one is, um, is asking about? Do you think there's a likelihood? We know the outcome is a handshake, mm -hmm. but we're just skirting around the issue. I think we are scattering around the issue mm -hmm. here because I think it was a misunderstanding when the, the, we had the story of the president of Tanzania, Samia Sulu, who came in here mm -hmm. having talks where the president did not appear. Mm -hmm. Now the tweet that the president made on Twitter mm -hmm. made people think that it's all about the handshake. Mm -hmm. But you see here, the, the president does not have a handshake, uh, doesn't want a handshake government. Mm -hmm. Also, the prime minister doesn't want let them talk if there's no handshake. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll quote what the DP 
Gashagwa said, mm -hmm. let it be on air the discussions that you are going to have so mm -hmm. that there won't be any hidden agenda. If you don't want a handshake, then let your discussion be on air. Call out the media to come and hear what you are saying. Let all Kenyans see what you want to say. So do you think that uh, broadcasting this discussion's life is going to help in you know eliminating any hidden agendas? Yeah, yeah I think mm -hmm. I think that will be the most appropriate way to because the other one was hidden. Mm -hmm. It just so people can be out of a room and, <laughs> and hand. shaking hands and you did not know what was going to I think for this they should call out the media. Mm -hmm. Let us broadcast this. Let Kenyans see what you are discussing mm -hmm. and let also them give their opinions. All right, that's going to happen tomorrow. So the dates have been set and uh, the discussion is going to happen in that 10-man team where the opposition is meeting the government to discuss issues which have led to people being called or a uh, clarion call for Kenyans to join the opposition in the streets. There have been demonstrations for the past few weeks, police brutality, destruction of property. The government on its end, you know, is saying that uh, we need to have a sober discussion where we don't call people to be violent. And, you know, we also need to discuss who's finding this mm -hmm. violence. Instead of pointing fingers, yeah. who's starting it, you know, it's like uh, what you took a playground. Yeah, you you, yeah, you find true. kids fighting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, well, Alianza, Yendoli Niskuma, Yendoli Rusha. But I think Kenyans at this point require um, an ultimatum. We don't care who talks with who. We don't mm -hmm. care whether they meet in Uganda, yeah. in, in Sudan. Mm -hmm. We don't care whether they meet tomorrow, yesterday, today. Mm -hmm. I think the issues um, that are affecting us in these tough economic times should be taking precedence even in this kind of grandstanding between the president and the former PM. But mm -hmm. eventually, even if we, you know, after all mm -hmm. is said and done, these are former ODM party members, yes, right? This yes. is um, this is the former, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, former uh, leader of the o ODM party. Yes. Actually, current leader of the ODM party, Lidia Raila Odinga, Odinga. Yes. and uh, President Ruto was the also former. uh, formerly in ODM. So, to the same ODM, we can actually we relax. Want to lead? Uh, exactly. Want to lead pole pole? Since they've been friends before, yeah. do you think that eventually they'll still settle this out? Ah, that will be a hard to tell mm -hmm. because you see with the wrangles that they have gone through before but politics is politics mm -hmm. they play the dirty games out here but mm -hmm. in they'll go and drink a cup of coffee when mm -hmm. they talk mm -hmm. so i think maybe there will be talks and mm -hmm. they will agree right yeah. there's um the president is currently in Mount Kenya, for mm -hmm. which we are in as well, uh, for a development tour. He's mm -hmm. been launching projects here and there. Yesterday he's been uh, quoted saying that he likens his presidency to the presidency of Mwai Kibachi. But would, do you agree on that or is, he, <laughs> is, is that far-fetched? I <laughs> think... <laughs> no, when I think... I can't really comment about the Mwai Kibaki's presidency because at that time I think I was young. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what was happening. Mm -hmm. But I think where we are going right now with that time, mm -hmm. there was a lot of cash that time. Mm -hmm. And now there is no cash in the country. Right. But let's hope that at the end of the five years that he has been given, mm -hmm. as Mwai Kibaki left the country in a good tone, mm -hmm. we hope that also Ruto will live in. You know, I try to tell myself that no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. So for Kenyans, you should get hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's pain, but at the end of the day, you'll just gain something. Maybe it's a good, mm -hmm. a good environment. Economy will go back. So mm -hmm. just a matter of time. Let's just give this government mm -hmm. time to work. Right. So you are supporting to give him time because the president yeah. has been asking for some time. And I yeah. say, policies here, mutuli, mutuli, and He has, like we, as you can see in the manifestation that he gave during the election. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it. It is not. It is not just something that will happen. Just. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of process, not in the government. And you can, we can't say that he's not working. If he could be sitting there mm -hmm. and we are not seeing it, we can see that he's working. Mm -hmm. He's working even collaborating with other countries to mm -hmm. get funds. Mm -hmm. So it is just a matter of time. Let's just give him time, five years. <laughs> not just rush, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. Kenyans will benefit on something. All right. You can read on the that much more on page four also of the daily nation ruto raila rule out power sharing ahead of uh, crucial talks and we are expecting to see insisting there's an insist uh, they're insisting on open talks which will be happening at bomas of kenya tomorrow so let's see if there'll be a live stream but i'll definitely tune into uh, this live stream and see uh, if we get fruits or you know yeah. there's a positive impact coming out of it Raila Odinga, not interested in power sharing president william ruto not interested in power sharing and kenyans not interested in any of power <laughs> conversations yeah i'll talk you could do a power sharing just want to know uh, 
what happens. Now, the Finance Act, the President as well is uh, quoted in Nyeri saying that he's in support of the Finance Act. Obviously, because it's his Finance Act and it's his maiden budget, it's funding is made his maiden budget of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. However, we've seen court cases, Okia Omtata, the Lost Society of Kenya, in the High Court, challenging section here, a section there, saying, you know, for Section 80, for example, of the Finance Act, the housing levy, what you want to back date. So if you're, um, you're employed in the Republic at the moment, you're going to face a very tough end of month this month mm -hmm. because you're paying 3%, you're paying 6% housing levy. 3% ya last month, ya nyokulipa, na 3% ya this month, right? And we're also seeing the implementation of the fuel levy, mm -hmm. even if there's that cost case, of course, with the EPRA Director General, uh, Daniel Kipto. Mm -hmm. Do you think the High Court might come to our rescue at any point? Or, as you said earlier, let's give the President time. Should we also give the Finance Act some time? <laughs> when it comes to the Finance Act, I don't think there's any time we could do we need mm -hmm. for the president mm -hmm. i think what the uh, the president the idea of the house the housing is such a good idea in fact mm -hmm. but i think is what, it? yeah it's a good idea mm -hmm. but in this aspect mm -hmm. if we could have started seeing that volunteers not everyone you don't have to force someone to buy a house That's just true. say mm -hmm. volunteers who are willing to buy these and i know they could have come investors who would have come and say i want to build this house and they will have invested in it mm -hmm. but not forcing people to pay for these houses mm -hmm. and at the end of the day maybe some of them like for them who have houses mm -hmm. they they are not seeing benefit of b buying another house mm -hmm. so i think it will, should have been more of a volunteering mm -hmm. investment rather than forcing investment mm -hmm. will there be houses though do you think <laughs> now that we know of the government and its grand projects you know we know the brt <laughs> 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 so projects and below, there were billion uh, shilling projects will there be houses that's the question i'm asking myself also mm -hmm. considering five years term mm -hmm. within the five years you'll have to count two years of planning mm -hmm. and all the about the construction mm -hmm. within the three years that will remain will the house be built mm -hmm. That is the question, and you can hear the amount of houses that they want to build. Mm -hmm. That is the same question I'm asking myself. Will there be houses? Because we have heard of projects, mm -hmm. like this project, this project, but at the end of the day, there is no project mm -hmm. there. So yeah. let's hope, and the fact that it has been involved with the whole country, every person in, mm -hmm. in the government who is working as, as a civil servant, I think there should be, there will be houses. All right. Yeah, question, if there will not be houses, there will be a question. All right. And question, Kenyans will have to ask the president a question. Okay. The the other thing that uh, Kenyans need to be asking questions on is kama ulilipa for mafuta last <laughs> month. Eh? EPRA waka kucharge. Just like KRA wanataka kuchukua taxes the last month, housing levy wanataka kuchukua the last month. Mm -hmm. Last month, EPRA walichukua taxes uh, fuel, right? So at 16% uh, per, you know, on VAT per, uh, per every petroleum product. So mm -hmm. an adjustment upwards of 10 shillings per liter of fuel, mm -hmm. 10 shillings for diesel, and I think around five or so for uh, kerosene. So do you think what was shikili my CTV? I'm going to some explanation in how EPRA cannot pay uh, or probably pay a fine. I don't know how that's going to be handled, but is there hope for us if there's people who are in contempt of court orders in that uh, on that kind of scale? Uh, let's say there, is, there will be hope, but not to individuals. Okay. The money will be sent back to the government. Okay. Don't expect to get the money back to yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, I think the fine, fine will be removed out to the... I don't think the, the country... It, it is the decision of the court to decide on that. Mm -hmm. For us, we can decide. But let us... For Kenyans, there is no hope of getting back the fuel mm -hmm. money. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully they pay a fine, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we hope. Well, of course. Um, on the business daily is where you get the story. The P APRA boss who's facing a day in court over those fuel taxes. Rao, he disregarded the court orders by the High Court. And we kept questioning that here on the show. Why is it that we are still being charged 16% VAT on fuel while the Finance Act is in suspension by all or most of its part that you can read on the business daily and also on those talks you can read on page 13 of the standard and page uh, four of the daily nation you're telling me of another story of interest here about the elderly yeah. in the standard 
Yeah, so there's this story about the elderly home in Kikuyu, Dogota. Mm -hmm. I think it's Dogota. Mm -hmm. Kikuyu subcounty near Nairobi, mm -hmm. where the elderly were being mistreated. It was a new story by the BBC mm -hmm. that was exposed of how they are being mistreated. And as you can see in the Daily Nation, page three, mm -hmm. where we see, we see someone, many have died of hunger. Their kids denied them of lunch and denied them of dinner, all because they do not want to make time to come and feed them. I think when it comes to this story, it's a failure to fast the children, mm -hmm. the children who have come to put their parents in this place. Mm -hmm. Our parents have made the responsibility of taking care of us. Mm -hmm. So for that, for the children, they should also take the same responsibility. Mm -hmm. this, this notion that parents are being told, do not invest in your child right now, mm -hmm. that he's an investment in the future. But for us kids, we should know that our parents are investment for us. Mm -hmm. We should take care of them when they are old. You see, for this, for this child, the elderly home, for I can take an instance where if someone is employed and has cash, mm -hmm. in, your, in your home, your parents' home, uh, employ someone who can take care of your child, of mm -hmm. your mother, mm -hmm. of your father. Instead of drawing them in such elderly homes, mm -hmm. then you come and be told that, hey, mm -hmm. your mother is dead. And you don't even bother to figure out why is mm -hmm. he or she dead. Mm -hmm. So I think it is a it's a call for the government also to look out on these elderly homes mm -hmm. and make sure that our parents are safe. They are killing our parents. What? Right? Yeah. Elderly. Elderly. <laughs> so that's what, uh, what is happening in Togoda. And I'm ashamed to say that, uh, you know, I studied around there and mm -hmm. we used to do good. We used to do, for people who went to the same high school as myself, know that we used to do um, elderly visit. We, we used to mm -hmm. call them oldies, old people visits to this very specific mm -hmm. Togoto care home for the aged in Kikuyu sub county. This very same one. So there's a very shocking revelation here that you can read for yourself on page three of the standard, but you can also watch it. It's a BBC Africa Eye expose mm -hmm. which showed some of the undercover recordings uh, on the allegations or actually recorded on screen this, uh, you know, elderly being mistreated, being caged for coming late, some of them being neglected, dying of hunger and uh, starvation there. So check it out. And it's reminding me of an interesting story that came up uh, just 13 hours ago, which was uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, it is a mystery of a mother who died at her home and nine months later, nine months to today, which means we are on the eighth month, she died in December. December. So in December last year, to date, she's been in her bed dead, and no one noticed. And she has a son who lives 300 meters away. 300 meters is like from here to where the gate of this station is at. 300 meters away to this place, and then later, you know, someone else comes from out the country, comes in and f discovers the mother is dead, and the dog as well. I think they found uh, the carcass of a dog next to her, mm. and she'd already decomposed beyond recognition. Is this a failure? Have we? Have we come to this level as a uh, Kenyan society where we are neglecting our loved, our loved ones, our elderly, we are beating them up if we take them to, uh, you know, uh, um, the, the homes for caring for the, for, for the elderly? Or if we are leaving them at home, we just, we don't do anything. They, they're saying that one of the sons who is providing for this elderly uh, mother who died and who was discovered nine months later had a standing order of uh, 20,000 Kenyan shillings from his salary. So nearly America, Kazini, 20,000 So, anapata tu, haulizi anendelea aji, anapata 29 months later, ametuma 9 times 20, that's 180,000 shillings later. <laughs> no, anakuja kudiscover the mom is dead. I think when, when it comes to such a story, I think it's, most people have gotten, have mis misunderstood what it means of taking, taking care of parents. Mm -hmm. it's, not lot of, it's not all about giving them money. Mm -hmm. It's about being there for them emotionally, physically, and also spiritually. When your ma you send to your mother money, she will be happy, so happy. But when you appear there physically, she's super excited. So I think these are, this more of young people, the millennials, the Generation Z, have misunderstood the fact of being what is taking care of your parents. Mm. It's not all about money. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's this meme that has been going around that a mother can take care of seven children, but seven children cannot take care of one mother. Ooh, that's sad. Yeah, that's so sad. That's a very especially sad in this generation. I think it's about time that we talk to talk to the 
children who are like the, the we the, mm. the generation because it's all about us mm -hmm. it's about time we know that parents need us when they are old mm -hmm. they don't need your money right. they had their money all through when they were taking care of you mm -hmm. here they need you they need your presence they need your presence they to feel loved okay when my let me say when my grandmother was alive she she would tell us i don't need your money just yeah. come here my children my that's grandchildren right, that's just like my grandma she calls me the first thing she says she quit she press her yes. so yeah, that just, we don't. yeah even though you are far away because we have those who have traveled abroad mm -hmm. just call your parents there's the zoom calls mm -hmm. the whatsapp calls just find out even when they call them how are you feeling mom mm -hmm. how are you feeling grandma they'll just feel good it's awesome mm -hmm. it's so shocking that for nine months mm -hmm. it's it's nine months is a long time no a long time not even a call not, not even, even a, just sending money Aye, that's, that's a long time that's a long time especially for the one living 300 meters away <laughs> That's a long time, not sure I've checked out mm. on your mother. So I didn't think we'll end up this discussion, you know, talking about family care, you know, and love and uh, family setup. But I think that's a, a very good way to introduce it here on Beersha Tuesday. Masi, it's 9.50 in the morning, which means we don't have time. I thought we have a lot of time to discuss much more of what is happening um, on the papers. But sadly, I think we have to wrap it up here. But one thing we do is we get a quote from you. And it's already provided. Oh, and don't worry. Don't, don't, don't panic. Don't panic. So we provided the, the back of the business daily. Let's get our last word. So the, um, the quote of the day is by Zig, Zig Zagal, uh, American author, salesman, and a motivational speaker. It says, set a goal so big that you can achieve it until you grow into the kind of person who can. Set a goal so big that you can achieve it until you grow into the kind of person who can. Can. Ooh, that's powerful. And uh, they're asking we get it a third time. Third time, third time is a charm. So okay. let's have it. <laughs> Set a goal so big that you can achieve it until you grow into the kind of person who can. Again, set a goal so big that you can achieve it until you grow into the kind of person who can. If we've I don't think we've ever emphasized a quote more before on this show, but that's what you need to think about as you head out to your days. And that's, of course, as much as we could discover with the time given on the Daily Nation, the Business Daily, and the Standard as well. Just a uh, uh, last word there on the State of the Nation. And maybe <laughs> what you want to hope. So any political, any political reporter, you know, they say that uh, people don't like watching news out there uh, uh -huh. because they are afraid of the negativity. You know, mm -hmm. oh, uh, our dog has beaten a child in Western. Gee, <laughs> you know, a lot of this yeah. uh, very negativity, uh, uh, so much negativity. Maybe just a... Uh, a reason why people should watch news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can say, well, news is not all about the negativity. There's always that good aspect. In every news that, check out on the positivity of it. Like I said earlier, for our president and the government, give them time. It's not just a matter of time when you'll see the goodness of everything that is, it, that is within it. For the other human stories, be assured there's hope. Despite the bad things happening, there's still the good things happening. Innovation is happening. We see uh, creation, agriculture happening. So it's not all about negativity. These are a lot. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so Marcy. much. Have a good day. Thank you. Taking a short break, Nikuja na feedback yenu, alafu to wrap up the show. Usiguze sana. Kumu ulikuwa natoka nze, ebutu ilia kidogo, and then 